Hey YouTubers, Facebookers and Instagrammers, I'm back for another episode of Charlie's Vlog number eight. I can't believe I've done eight episodes of this already. Um, this past week, 10 days has been super warm here, so I haven't been able to do the volume of training that I want to. I've predominantly been training at home because I didn't want to travel 45 minutes to be only able to get five minutes out of my dog. But today's episode, I'm translating that handling work, the left, rights and back, the three car trick to my training ground. Now, when you change places where you've been teaching something, you always want to make it super easy at first. So maybe you've been doing a 10 meter retrieve at home, you suddenly go to a new place, I would reduce it right back down again to give you the best chance of the dog getting it right. A change of environment really can confuse a dog sometimes. Um, I've also started doing a little bit of jumping over one of my training lanes, just to get the dog nice and fun. Again, a thing I can do at the end of a session when the dog's sort of had enough because it's not too rigid in what, the, uh, in what I am actually asking of the dog so it's all quite fun just letting the dog jump over um, maybe in a few weeks time I'm going to try and get a bit more hunting again conditions haven't been great for that I have moved what he's doing on quite a lot um, it is harder to catch on camera now because I'm moving at such a quick pace but I will do my best in some of the episodes to come anyway I hope you enjoy episode eight and I'll catch you at the end right guys so we're gonna do some of the three card trick now um, I've got this on a wide angle lens, so the picture might be a bit strange, but it's so that you can see everything going on. So up to now we've been doing left, rights and backs at home, but we've just started doing them here in a new space. I've got a nice back retrieve here, and I'm gonna be doing some left and right either side. So it's a change of environment, um, so we'll see how this goes. Charlie, sit. I'm gonna start by putting sit at the side retrieve, so the left and the right. I wanna make sure they land on the track and that the dog can see them clearly able to land awkwardly, I would go out and put them out again. This one's going behind. Again, if it fell into the cover, I would move it. Sit. Right. So here, I've just done a back with my left hand, whilst there was also a retrieve out to the left-hand side. It looks simple enough, but that is a super tricky retrieve to do right from the start. So that was back with my left hand. So I'm slowly increasing the distance out on those good boy child. Good boy. The hardest is when, I'll show you the sequence that's the hardest to get right. Charlie, Charlie. So I'm gonna. So here you'll see me put both my arms out to the left and the right. Then I put my right arm up, but I actually send them over my left. And that's to make sure that the dog is concentrating on actually the command I give and not trying to predict what it thinks that I'm about to do. Pick the left, put that one back out again, and then try and pick the back one with my left hand. And that is the tricky combination. Good boy, Charlie. Whee! Good boy. Well so later that will be a sit delivery, but I'm still, because this is quite a tough drill, keeping the end part fun. Good boy. Here. Training lead on allows me to manipulate the dog as I want. Charlie, here. Put that one back out. Right. I'm just going to slowly increase the distance out on that as well. But that's the hardest one to pick because he knows this went out to the left. So his natural inclination is not to want to go back, but to go left. So, good boy. Sit. Brrr. Sit. Charlie, sit. I can go a lot further back on the right to the left because they're much easier to get right. Good boy. So yeah, on those lefts and rights, you'll notice I go a lot further back. But I am working up towards that with the back retrieves as well. If I was just doing the back retrieves on the road, it'd be fine. Charlie, sit. Right. Really clear verbal command when I do that with the arm. So there's no misunderstanding that I was sending it back. And if it goes wrong, I know I've done my part right. Good boy. Can you pick it up? Good boy. Well done. Good boy. Sit. So he still flattens a bit when I do this because this is quite a pressure drill and it's his way of getting out of it. Ah, ah. Charlie, sit. See, I don't rush that. I wait for him to read the actual command and not what he thinks is coming. So sometimes you'll see me put my right hand up high as if I'm going to do a back with my right, but then 
I send the dog to a completely different retrieve. It means the dog has to wait for the command rather than predicting it, which is what a lot of dogs will do. See, that one's fallen slightly awkwardly. So when I pick that one, I'll move him slightly towards me. Sit. <coughs> Charlie, ah, ah, sit. Right. That's a good distance to get to now for his age. It's five months now, by the way, guys. Ah, ah, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. Woo, we gone. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. I'm going to pick that awkward back one now. Sorry, the awkward left one that's just fallen awkwardly, and you'll see what I'm going to do. So I'm keeping the angle 90 degrees. Charlie, sit. Sit. So here I'm using the recall sit to reposition the dog slightly closer so that I have 90 degrees on the left hand cast. I want to keep that nice 90 degree angle guys. So I move myself to create that angle that I want. Good boy, well done, good lad. Good boy, sit. Sit. Ah, ah, sit, Charlie. No dog is perfect to train. They've all got their own little quirks and faults. Sit. Good boy. I'm always coming back also to meet him on the spot that I sent him from. Good boy, well done. You good boy. So good boy, well done. Yeah. Sit. Back out, Ooh. sit. I don't know if you're seeing those ones on camera, sit. Difficult back retrieve with the right hand this time. Right, right, sit. So you'll notice the dog froze here. So rather than really pushing, I try a second time. I then move a lot closer to reduce the distance down, which generally will make the retrieve a little bit easier and allow you then to move on. Because he didn't go, I've just come a little bit closer to make it easier. Charlie, Charlie. Right. See, just that slight pause, come a bit closer. If a dog doesn't go, it goes the wrong way. It's normally telling you it doesn't quite, ah, Charlie. It's normally telling you it doesn't quite understand. So rather than get angry or persist, you think to yourself, how can I make this slightly easier for him to get right? He's not a deliberately naughty dog. So he was a bit confused there. So I tried a couple of times, it didn't work. So I closed the gap, gave him a little pause, and then he picked it far. Boy, sit. boy well done but again because i've thrown that one slightly awkwardly charlie Ch charlie i'm not bothered about this looping round by the way it doesn't bother me it won't reflect in his retrieving layer good boy well done good boy good boy as long as he meets me on the spot sit sit see normally i would keep my whistle in my mouth all the time but because i'm obviously doing so much talking it's not so good charlie ah He's almost had enough now. Right! Now what I am going to do in a second, good boy, good boy, Charlie, Charlie. good boy, is I'm now going to mix this up a bit. So you'll see what I mean. Here, sit. Sit. I've never taught him to sit and stay. He's learned that there's a byproduct of doing everything else. So now, I'm going to mix this up a little bit, good boy. Now, if you always used the same spot for back, the dog can end up learning that a spot is a, is a verbal command. So I've done left, rights and backs here, and this will make up the early part mass of what I do. Now I'm gonna flip it on, the on its head. That's gonna become the back, that's the left, and that's the right. Okay, Charlie, Charlie, okay, sit. Only a little bit of this, because he's had enough of this now. Just to show you what I mean. Right. Just because he can do further than that, because I've changed the position in the spot, I always go back to making those early retrieves easier. Good boy, well done. Good boy. Good boy, here. 
That's it. Good boy. Put that one back out. Left hand. Good boy. When a dog gets good, they turn and run rather than trying and turning and running at the same time. Woo! So a dog will turn and then run in a straight line rather than trying to do both. That's when they're getting good. And that's what you need for it to make sense elsewhere. Sit. You can pick this right one. Charlie. When they're young, they bow and then straighten up. That's why they've got to be able to see the retrieve in these early retrieves. Otherwise, they won't learn to run straight. Sit. Oh boy. A couple more like this. Sit. Back retrieve on my right. Charlie. Right. You can see he's losing pace now. He's had enough. But I just wanted to show you. As I've said in previous videos. Ooh, what is it? Got some burrs on Charlie. Um, put that out of the way, I said. Put that out of the way, I said. Got some burrs in his ears. Um, when I train to show videos, do that in a minute. I train for, I do more than I would normally do. And that's obviously trying to capitalize. Boy, sit. Right, one more left, and that'll do you. He's had enough. Good lad. Good boy. Yeah. Get rid of those birds in his ears, they're driving him mad. Good boy. I'll pick the rest up in a sec. So, Charlie, sit. So, as I just said, mixing up these combinations. Over time, this distance is going to get further. As things get cooler, it's like Sunday morning, it's like half past seven in the morning and it's already 18 to 20 degrees. So these dogs are going to perform a lot better once we go into the winter months. The pace comes up, the strength, the endurance, everything. So yeah, bit of time. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. Right guys, so one of the things I do at the end of the session is when I want to do something that's quite fun, is I'm just teaching him to just jump this little puppy training lane here. Um, and I just literally start off by just getting a dummy. And he's only done this a couple of times, not for a little while now. And I'm literally just going to throw the ball over and let him go. Good boy. Well done. Good boy. It's really puppy-like. It's nice and fun. Charlie, Charlie, let's do the same again. I'm going to throw it over. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. Good lad. Now, later, I'll make a bigger jump, but at the moment, Johnny, Johnny, this is just quite fun. Sit, sit, back. Good boy. I sighted that there, didn't you? Charlie. Where's he going? Good boy, well done. So if you've got a little bit of a plank or something, you can just get the dog to jump over. It can be quite fun, although he's obviously doing very formal retrieves as well. Sit, back, oh, see, bit of practice, good boy, be like a show pony soon, won't you, come on, just let him run in on that one, good boy, good boy, good boy, okay, I'll make him sit this time, sit, back, good boy, yeah, so it's nothing more complicated than that, I've done that a few times, uh, it's been so hot this last week, I've barely done any training. Right, well, I hope you enjoyed this latest episode from Charlie's Vlog. Hopefully, there'll be another one next week. Don't forget to subscribe and like, guys. It really does help my channel. If you're looking for any training and support, go through to Hampshire Spaniel Training on Facebook. If you are looking for any training products, also go through to Spaniel Training Kit on Facebook. Links are in the description below. Happy training, guys.